Really? No questions? Of course we have questions. This is just a lot to take in. <sighs> sure, of course. So these maidens, they're powerful fighters that don't need dust to use magic. Yeah. And that's what you were trying to do to Pyrrha. The night the tower fell, you were trying to turn her into one of them. The previous fall maiden, Amber, had been attacked. She was young and experienced. And her assailant, who we now know as Cinder, somehow managed to steal some of her power, but not all of it. We were afraid that if we didn't do something, the rest would go to her as well. So you forced it on Pyrrha? We didn't force anything. We explained the situation and gave her a choice, and she chose. You were there. You heard her. That guy, Tyrion. Why was he after me? <sighs> well, you definitely painted a target on your back with what you did at Beacon. I told you having silver eyes is a rare trait. And the fact that you're someone that was able to use them seems to have upset some very powerful people. Not many people know about the silver eyes. But those that do aren't very happy that one has surfaced. That's why I've been keeping an eye on you. Wanted to make sure you were safe. All of you. Well, then, why not just travel with us? It seems like that would have been way easier. He was using you as bait. I wouldn't put it like that. It's complicated. What is all of this? Ruby's being hunted. The schools are being attacked. All for what? What is the point of all of this? Will you just tell us what's going on? <sighs> Would you sit down? You're stressing me out, kid. Bill tricked me. It's the biggest regret of my life. Bill wasn't always my enemy, Dipper. I used to think he was my friend. Long, long ago. I had hit a roadblock in my investigation of Gravity Falls. Until I found some mysterious writing in a cave. Ancient incantations about a being with answers. It warned me not to read them, but I was desperate. I read the inscription aloud. But nothing happened. Until later that afternoon, when I had the most peculiar dream. Hiya, smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. Yeah. Whoa, don't have a heart attack. You're not 92 yet. Who are you? Name's Bill. And your name's Stanford Pines, the man who changed the world. But I'm getting ahead of ourselves. Let's relax. Care for a game of interdimensional chess? Have a cup of tea. He told me he was a muse, that he chose one brilliant mind a century to inspire. What a fool I was, blinded by his flattery and games. He became my research assistant. He was free to move in and out of my mind as he pleased. We were partners. When he told me that I could complete my research by building a gateway to other worlds, I trusted him. He said this was the way genius happened, with a little help from a friend. It seemed that I was on the verge of my greatest achievement. Until my partner got a glimpse of Bill's true plans. Bill, you lied to me! Where does that portal really lead? Looks like Mr. Brainiac finally got smart. Let's just say that when that portal finishes charging up, your dimension is gonna learn how to party. Right, guys? No, I'll stop you. I'll shut it down! A deal's a deal, Sixer. You can't stop the bridge between our worlds from coming, but it would be fun to watch you try. Cute even. I'd been betrayed. I shut the portal down, severing the link between Bill's world and ours. I had to hide my instructions so no one could ever finish Bill's work. Bill's been waiting for the gateway to reopen ever since. All he needs to do is get his hands on this rift. To Bill, it's just a game. But to us, it would mean the end of our world. 